A severe accident occurred at the Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Station on March 11, 2011. With the support of numerous partners, we are steadily moving forward with the decommissioning process. We would like to explain decommissioning work while looking back at the accident. When all power was lost to units one through three, the reactors could no longer be cooled and the fuel melted. This caused the generation of a large amount of hydrogen, which ultimately resulted in the hydrogen explosions in units one, three, and four, which was connected to unit three. Currently, all units have been brought under control and are being stably cooled. This was the Unit 1 building at the time of the accident. At Unit 1, rubble is being removed from inside the reactor building in preparation for removing fuel from the spent fuel pool. Work to install supports to the overhead crane and fuel handling machine was completed in November 2020 in order to prevent rubble scattering and affecting fuel in the pool. We are planning to begin construction of a large cover over the reactor building in order to remove rubble during the first half of fiscal year 2021. Fuel removal from the spent fuel pool is expected to begin between fiscal year 2027 and fiscal year 2028. Internal explorations of the PCV are being conducted in preparation for fuel debris removal. At Unit 2, the top blowout panels on the sides of the reactor building were opened by the hydrogen explosion at Unit 1. This allowed built-up hydrogen to escape, thereby avoiding a hydrogen explosion. In preparation for fuel removal from the spent fuel pool, an investigation of the inside of the spent fuel pool was conducted in June 2020, the first time since the accident. The investigation didn't reveal any conditions that would hinder fuel removal. The footage taken during the investigation is being carefully analyzed and the results of the investigation will be reflected in the design of fuel handling machines. Currently, we are preparing to construct a platform on the south side of the reactor building in preparation for fuel removal. Fuel debris removal will begin at Unit 2. Investigations conducted to date have shown that deposits can be grabbed and moved. At Unit 3, fuel removal from the spent fuel pool is underway. 93% of the total amount of fuel has been removed as of January 2021. Investigations conducted in preparation for fuel debris removal found structures and deposits inside the PCV, which appear to have melted and fallen from above. At Unit 4, all fuel was removed from the spent fuel pool, thereby eliminating potential risks. This is the seaside area. Rubble was scattered everywhere. Highly radioactive rubble was removed and radiation levels were lowered The removed rubble was collected and is being stored on the premises and waste-related facilities for storage and incineration are now being constructed on the north side of the site.
Progress has also been made with countermeasures for earthquakes and tsunami. The Unit 1 and 2 exhaust stack has sufficient seismic resistance, but the top half of the stack was dismantled in order to reduce the risk of collapse. This task was completed in May 2020 in cooperation with local companies. Furthermore, to prepare for another tsunami, we have been building seawalls and construction of a seawall to combat a possible tsunami generated in the Kuril Kamchatka Trench was completed in September 2020. We will continue to strengthen tsunami countermeasures. As the result of measures to prevent the dispersion of radioactive materials, ground surfaces are being paved and this work has been completed in most areas. After the accident, workers had to wear protective clothing and full face masks in every area of the power station. Currently, workers can wear regular uniforms and simple dust masks in 96% of the entire site. Some areas can now be accessed without wearing any protective equipment, not even masks or gloves. In November 2019, we began using a new system that employs smart glass in order to improve the efficiency and accuracy of radiation analysis work. This enabled us to reduce the time required for data processing to about one third and greatly improved work efficiency. This is the large rest house. It has a cafeteria where workers can eat hot meals made with ingredients grown in Fukushima Prefecture and also a convenience store. All the facilities needed to support decommissioning work, such as a fully equipped medical facility, have been built. The new administration office building and the partner company's building have been built side by side and the close proximity allows TEPCO employees and contractors to work in unity. Progress has also been made with contaminated water countermeasures. Contaminated water is created when rainwater leaking through the damaged roof and groundwater flowing into the buildings comes into contact with radioactive materials. Therefore, Ground surfaces have been paved to prevent rainwater from seeping into the ground and groundwater is pumped up using wells around the buildings. A frozen soil wall that surrounds the buildings has also been formed to reduce the amount of groundwater flowing into the buildings. Measures to prevent rainwater from seeping into the damaged buildings are also underway. Groundwater is prevented from flowing into the ocean by a steel wall that was constructed at the edge of the port area. Groundwater that accumulates at this barrier is pumped up using wells located inside the wall, thereby keeping the environment inside the port safe. In the ocean area surrounding the power station, surveys are performed in various places to measure the concentrations of radioactive materials which have been lowered to and being stably kept at levels below national standards. The radioactive materials in contaminated water are treated using the multi-nuclide removal equipment referred to as ALPS and other equipment. Treated water is being stored in welded tanks, which are more reliable and less likely to leak. The decommissioning process is expected to take 30 to 40 years. We shall continue to move forward steadily and safely with this task in cooperation with our domestic and international partners.